Hello everyone, this is Dave from DeveStechNet.com. This is my shop. Today we're going to work on fuel consumption testing for a 1959 235. As you can see, there's a bottle on top of the gas tank that has the ounce gradations. Um, standard set of gauges, and um, we're going to include an O2 sensor on, in this project. The O2 sensor will be read with a fluke multimeter. It's a narrow band. Uh, one, I made a uh, harness for it with test points and uh, an o uh, a USB connector uh, to get it apart when, I didn't, when I'm not using it. Here we can see the uh, O2 sensor. Um, it's a standard SG5. Um, not much to it. Be sure to put the flange above the bung before you weld it in. Uh, I also set up the carburetor so we had two protractors set up side by side. Uh, the yellow one is stationary, the green one is moving so we can see how much throttle position that we have while we're uh, testing. We're going to test for fuel consumption so I wanted the exhaust outside. I set the engine to run at about 550 RPM for this uh, little ex uh, experiment we're having here. The idea is to uh, show that we can completely adjust the O2 sensor uh, with the mixture screw. Um, I started at 550 RPM and I got it really rich. And uh, you can do that in any number of ways. You can choke it if you need to to get the richness at, in there because this is not an O2 sensor vehicle these were uh, these were uh, before O2 sensors were invented okay so now I'm going to adjust it down to the 0.5 um, that is that is perfect but that's what they call stoic between uh, rich and lean uh, the computer if there was one would would try to shoot for that rich or lean, rich and lean condition, or the 0 .500. Now I'm going to run it down to uh, as low as I can, without stalling the engine. Um, you'll see that there's a big, a significant lag going on, and it's because this is not a heater switch. This is not something you can just turn and watch the meter move. You've got uh, fuel consumption here, where the carburetor is uh, got one small hole in the middle of it and it's trying to through vacuum put the fuel into the cylinders and it takes a while for it to do that so we're just going to sit here and let this thing go down to uh, as low as it'll go maybe a little lower than that okay I'm feeling that the engine is getting a little bit starved for fuel here but that's okay we're gonna we're gonna try to keep it running and get it down as low as we can now that is called a lean condition that is uh, you're, you're not put, putting enough fuel in and it won't it won't time correctly it won't run correctly this way but the idea is that I'm trying to demonstrate here is that we can adjust that O2 sensor. We can adjust the mixture screw using the O2 sensor's output so that we get a decent re reading. All right, so let's turn this thing up to, uh, no, I'm still going down, folks. The narration comes after the video. All right, up we go. We're going up to 0.5 again. And it looks like we're going even higher than that. This has got to do with the lag. You can't just uh turn it up and watch it. It's it's going to you're going to have to be patient and count to 20 before you uh make any turns in the, on the screw. There's a lot going on there. To actually see a sensor give us this very accurate information is pretty incredible. 
here we have the stoic value of 0.5. And this is um, where you want to want to set it. I personally set it at 0.450 because I was reading on the websites that you can uh, get a little better engine performance with 0.450, just a hair leaner mixture. So here we are sitting there at 5 and we'll sit, we could sit here all day at 5 just to show you that we can adjust this thing. Uh, understand that RPM is fluctuating about the same amount as that fluke meter is showing there as well just due to it being a 235 engine that's just the way they are they'll fluctuate 20 rpm sometimes so here we are turn that thing way up we've got a seriously rich condition here just to show that I can adjust this thing anywhere in between that I want to and now I'm going to go back down. The, the 8 point whatever you saw there was pretty doggone rich and it was it was bogging down. So now I'm going to run this thing down to 5 again just to show that I can go up and down or down and up with the same ease. Notice how I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. I put my screwdriver in the way just so that I would be able to say right here this is where you need to look to see how long it takes to get this thing to settle down. Okay, a little, went a little beyond it, but it's going to sit there right about there and not move. So let's go up a little bit. Now I know there was some talk about how the uh, o the narrow band O2 sensor is not going to give you this. Well, that's because the professionals that thought that uh, it would give you this uh, had the ECM connected and they would swear up and down there's no way that you're going to get a decent meter reading because it just goes all over the place I was told that it flip flops and it it runs on clock cycles I was told all kinds of stuff but because I didn't know any better I just took the sensor up to the fluke meter and this is where we're at so um, just wanted to show you that this is what I'm seeing. Your results may vary. All right, now we're down here at the lowest setting. I'm still trying to get it lower, but you know, come on, it's it's not going to run very well. You you can say between three and seven is probably the most useful range. Anything less than that, your your engine's starting to you can see some shaking going on there. The engine's starting to bog down for lack of fuel. All right, let's put it back up on five again. And the reason why my, my forum posts were, I can do this all day, is because, folks, I can do this all day. This is adjustable as it can get. And you have to understand what the carburetor is doing and how this whole thing works. You're not going to get an immediate response. It's going to take some time for it to catch up. Okay, so it's just sitting here running where it's supposed to and it'll do this all day. Appreciate your time. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, give me a send me an email at dvetspeedprint.com, or just get on forums.devstechnet.com and leave a leave a message for me. It's always nice to hear from people. Take care and stay tuned for more to come. Please go away, let me sleep for the love of God!